Hello boys and girls, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in Algebra 1. Today we're going to have our last lesson in Unit 7, talking about exponential functions. Today our focus is making sure we can understand between what is a linear function and an exponential function. So to start us off, let's remember something real quick here. I've shown you here the graph of a line and an exponential function. So the one here in red, it's kind of hard to see it. The one here in red is exponential, so that's the g g of x. This one is the f of x. Oops, so if you want to write these down real quick, this is just a slope of 2 with a y-intercept of 1. Starts off here, initial value 1, and goes in a constant straight line. But the exponential one, it starts off much slower, and then it speeds up and starts curving really, really fast. Okay, so we've been talking about that. You should be able to recognize that from the graph. What we want to do is be able to recognize the difference between them given a couple of different types of scenarios. So that's the main focus of our lesson today. So our first problem, what we're going to do is recognize what type of relationship we have. Now, you might want to put on the side of your notes, maybe off the left, the type of relationships, there's four different choices we could have. It could be, actually, I'm going to type this out. There we go, much easier. So here's the four options that you probably want to put in maybe the margin as the types of relationships. We're only going, only going to look at these four things. So it's exponential growth, exponential decay, linear growth, or linear decay. So basically, is it exponential or linear? And then once you know that, is it getting bigger or is it getting smaller? That's what we're looking for. So here we have a savings account, S. This is to help us know what the variables are, S and M. And it's going to start off with $500 accumulates no interest, but it is going to receive a deposit of $8.25 per month. So what you're looking for is, are we going to be multiplying by a number, or are we adding a number? And if it's $8.25 every single month, we're adding $8.25 per month. So that means this is linear, and it's gaining, so it's linear growth. So that's the type of relationship that we, we have. Now let's create a function. So we're going to say that the savings account is going to be s equals, but before I write the s, so I'm going to leave a little space here, s equals. But we're going to use function notation and tell us what's the other variable we're using on the other side. It's going to be s of m. Okay, it's the same thing as just saying s equals. That's exactly the same thing, but we're just going to have an m as a variable on the other side. So then what are we starting off with? It's got $500, so that's our initial amount of $500, and we are adding $825 every single month. So there's our variable. So this is like our slope. If you look at this, this is mx plus b. So this is your slope. This is your variable. It's not an x, which just, that's okay. In this case, it's an m. And then there's your y-intercept of 500. All right, let's go to the next one. The value v of a house is $150,000, and it increases by 1.5% per year. So are we adding a certain amount every year? No, this is where it's a, a percent increase. This is where we're going to be multiplying. And we are going to be multiplying the base of this. If you remember this 1.05, it's going to be 1 plus, and this is where you convert it to a decimal. Take the point, move it over twice, add it to the 1. So we're multiplying by 0 .1 0.015 every time. That means this is exponential growth. And it is growing because it's increasing. So exponential growth. And the other part of our answer, so that's the relationship. Now let's come up with the equation. So it's going to be the value of the house. So it's v. And it would normally just be v equals, but we're going to do function notation. So instead of just v equals, it's v of t. The other variable on the other side is going to be a t. Our initial amount is 150,000. So that's the a that goes in front here. One, two, three more zeros. 150,000. And then the base, our, we already talked about, is 1.015. That's a 1.5% 1 increase raised to the variable of t. All right. Next type of problem. Now you're going to look at some values in a table and figure out is this exponential or linear. So what we need to know is if we are adding or if we are multiplying from step to step. Well, it goes down by 3, and then it does not go down by 3. If it doesn't consistently go down by the same amount, 
as the uh, the x variable, or in this case the r variable, if as this goes one step at a time, it should be going down by the same amount as not. So that means we're actually multiplying by something. We're not adding, we are multiplying. So what's the number? Well, if you don't know, let's go the other direction. Remember doing this? So I'm just going to say 12 divided by 15 equals 0 0.8. If you don't, can't do that in your head, just grab a calculator and you can use a calculator. So 12 fifteenths is the same thing as 0 0.8. So that's what we would be multiplying by for each step of the way times 0 0.8. So that means this is, we're multiplying, it is exponential and then what? Exponential decay because we are getting smaller and smaller. So now let's set up our equation and we got to use these variables here. So it's going to be a equals, except we're using function notation, so it's a of r, which is the same thing as just a equals. And the initial amount, when, when the r is a 0, we're starting off with 15. 15. Oh, uh, what's the base? Oh, we already said 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is our decay factor that goes right there, and raised to the variable of r. There's our answer for this one. All right, number four. This, again, let's figure out what is going on from step to step. Are we adding or are we multiplying? In this case, it looks like we are adding every step. We're adding five. Adding five. So that means it is uh, linear. And we're gaining, so it's linear growth. Sorry about my sloppiness. I am trying to go kind of quickly here. Linear growth. All right, let's come up with an equation. S of t equals s of t is equal to, what's our initial amount? We're starting off at 10. And then from 10, we are adding 5 every single t. So there's our variable t. That's like your slope. That's your y-intercept. 10 plus 5t, linear growth. So we've done problems from a scenario where it's a word problem. We've done things with a table. And lastly, we're going to just look at the graphs, figure it out from the graphs. This, uh, we're just going to use x and f of x. So instead of, a, this remembers the same thing as y, but we're going to just call it f of x. So f of x equals, oh, I got to say, is it linear or exponential? Hopefully you know what a line looks like. Linear, and this is linear decay because it's getting smaller as you go left to right. So it's linear decay. And f of x equals, so we're going to start off at 6. And then we are subtracting how much? What's the slope here? You go down and over, down and over, down one, right one, down one, right one. So it's just 1 over 1, negative 1 over 1. So it's just a negative 1x. And that's all you have to put, 6 minus x. That's the equation of this line. The slope, I didn't write it, but the slope's a negative 1 right there. All right, this one. This is obviously exponential. It's an exponential curve. It is exponential, and it is getting smaller, so it's exponential decay. Sometimes you'll only see just a portion of it, and so it kind of looks like a straight line, so you do need to be careful about that. It's not always just this obvious. Uh, and let's see. We're going to say f of x is equal to the initial amount, our beginning, when x is 0, was 8. So that's my a. Remember the a, b to the x. So that's my a. And then what in the world is the b? So it's going to be raised to the x. What goes right here? Well, how do you get from 8 to 4? What do you multiply by to get from 8 to 4? And if you're not sure, you could just say 4 divided by 8. And you discover that that is 0 0.5, 1 half. So there's your answer for that one. Next part of our notes, we're talking about something called doubling time. Now, up to now in the notes, everything should have been at least somewhat review. Uh, I know they're, we're just kind of trying to compare things together, but now this is new stuff that we're talking about. We're going to do doubling time and then half-life. Doubling time is talking about taking something, we'll call it A, so this is just our initial amount, A, initial amount, and that it's going to double every something calling it x, but it could be every, you'll, you'll see in the examples here, and that goes right there. So notice what are the variables in this? f of t is one of the variables, so f, and then the other variable is a t. It's like your x and your y. A, this little a and this little thing here, those two things are going to be numbers that you'll plug in for the problem. Okay, so this might seem kind of strange, but let me just show you how this works with an example. I think it'll make more sense, and I'll refer back to this so you can tell. 
the number of people p living in a city doubles every 30 years. So if it doubles every 30 years, we're calling t, every 30 years, that's where it comes up here. It doubles every something. The 30 goes right there into this x. If there are currently 7,000 people in the city, how many will live there in 50 years? Okay, let's first set up an equation. So it's going to be the number of people is going to equal, but I'm going to do function notation, so it's p of t. That's my other variable, p of t. So p of t equals, what is, uh, how many people are there? 7,000. So my initial amount is 7,000. And then I'm doubling, so it's the base is going to be a 2, because I'm going to be multiplying it by 2. Now, when do I multiply it by 2? When I get to uh, 30 years. It doubles every 30 years. So here's how we do that. I do a little fraction with a 30 on bottom, and in the top is the variable t. There is your answer. That's how this matches up here. You put the 7,000 as your initial amount, and how much it doubles by down here on the bottom of this fraction. And there's always 2 for doubling. So that would mean if this becomes a 30, if we get to 30 years, 30 divided by 30 is 1, and that's why it's doubling. If we go to 60 years, 60 divided by 30 is 2. 60 divided by 30, if we got to 60 years, it would be 2. So it'd be, we'd be doing times 2 twice. It'd be 2 times 2, quadrupling. All right, so then now let's just do this. We want to know how many live there in 50 years. So you plug in the 50, P of T equals, and now this is where we just take a calculator, and you type in 7,000 times 2 raised to the, and then this is 50 divided by 30 up inside that exponent. So that is, I already did it on my calculator, so it's 22,223, and I'm going to go a couple decimals, 61. I know you can't have a 0.61 of a person, but we're just, uh, because this is a model that helps us know, we're going to round go to a couple decimal places for us. So 22,223 people about is what this is in about 50 years. All right, next one. Uh, so we got cockroaches behind Mr. Bruss microwave. I know, disgusting. I should show you a picture, but that would gross you out. And we are going to be doubling every 14 days. And then how many cockroaches will be in 40 days? So the first thing is let's set up an equation. So this is going to be the C equals. So the cockroaches are going to equal, we're going to do function notation, C of D, because the other variable was days. So C of D is going to equal, what's the initial? So I figure out what my A is. It's a 3. Always timesing by 2 when we double. And then what is this over here? It's going to be T divided by, what's the doubling? How many times? Oh, every 14 days. 14. This is all inside the exponent, T over 14. How many cockroaches are there? in 40 days. So the days are 40. That means you just take this equation and you plug in a 40 over 14 and then that is going to be approximately 21.74 cockroaches. So almost 22 cockroaches is about what it would be. Okay, last part of the notes. If you were a little confused on doubling time, we're going to get some more practice because now we're doing half-life. It's exactly the same idea. If you notice, this is very, very similar, but now we're trying to see how long does it take for something to become half of what it used to be. All right, so it's the same type of formula. You have your initial amount A, but instead of doubling, you're taking half of it, so you multiply by a half. And then this X here is how long it takes for it, this thing A to become half of it. All right, so get this written down. Let's do an example. Hopefully this will make sense. There's 500 grams G of radioactive material. So we're going to say G equals leaving a space because I want to do function notation. So g equals, what's my other variable, t? t for years? Yep, g of t equals, I have an initial amount of 500 grams, and I'm going to be multiplying it by a half to take half of it, raised to the t over, uh, how long is a half-life? Ooh, 5,700 years. 5,700 hundred years. That is a long time. It's going to take 5,700 years to get it to 250, to take half of 500. That is a long time. Uh, so now the question asks, how many is there going to be in 20,000 years? So that means g of 20,000 
I'm going to go straight to the answer. All this is is you take 20,000, you plug it into a, this into t right here in the calculator. Make sure that whole thing's in the exponent. Multiply it all out. And what is this one? You're going to have out of the 500 grams, there's now going to be 43.93. We'll go a couple decimals. 43.93 grams. That is what is left after 20,000 years. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, number 10, I want you to pause and try this one out on your own. I'm going to show you what the function is first, and then you have to use function notation and plug in uh, five years. And be careful, I'm going to give you one hint here. This says years, and this says months. So just be careful about that when you're working on this problem. All right, pause, work this last problem, and then I'll have the answer. All right, here's our answer. We've got P of M. That's our variables. P is the population of the rodents. M is the months. So P of M equals 1,700 for our initial amount of rodents, times it by uh, a half for half-life, raised to the T over 6, because every six months we're going to uh, have half the population. All right, now this was the trick. We had to plug in a 60, not a 5, because remember M stands for months. If we plugged in a 5, that would have been only 5 months, and so we needed... Uh, how many months are in five years, which is 60. So you plug that in and you end up with 1.66 rodents. It's pretty impressive. So the population of rodents have gone way down. It used to be 1,700 after five years, all the way down to 1.66. All right, that is the end of our lesson. Rock that mastery check and good luck on your final test here before going into the next unit.